Today I am here not to discuss the history of democracy, but rather today I am here to discuss how Putin had not only turned Russia into his own self-centered dictatorship, but also to discuss his aggression towards the Ukrainian nation and how he has um, decided to make his cowardly action to invade Ukraine, a small yet heroic nation that has been standing up for to Russia since, ever since 2014. Now, let us go back to the start. It's December 26, 1991, and the Soviet flag is lowered from Moscow. Up comes a new flag, the flag of the Russian Federation. Now, in fact, the collapse of the Soviet Union had been going on ever since late 1990, when the first Soviet Republic succeeded, uh, seceded, Lithuania. And the last Soviet Republic to leave was not Russia, surprisingly, but Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. You heard me right, Kazakhstan. And then, the USSR was broken up. The problem was, the new Russian Federation if not a continental hegemon, was still greatly a local one. And quickly, tensions between the U.S. and the new Russian Federation, just like the USSR, started to hit a peak. In Ukraine, a pro-Russian government was in place. However, this all changed. But let's forget all of that and move back into Russia. Now, the first president of Russia was Boris Yeltsin. Boris Yeltsin was a former member of the Communist Party who became mayor of Moscow around 1986. However, in 1987, he was demoted and nearly fired because of his criticisms of um, Gorbachev and uh, saying that his reforms were too slow. And eventually, he left the Communist Party in July of 1990. And in 1991, he, he was elected the first president of Russia. And despite his great fall, people still loved him due to his way of economic reform and um, his de democratic ideas. And eventually, he was able to rule over Russia for a decade. As president of Russia, he did a few things. First of all, he immediately got to work in changing the system of Russia to a more capitalistic one. There was a new free market and there were privately owned businesses. In 1994, he had to quell a rebellion in Chechnya. And uh, God knows if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And in 1997, he eventually signed peace with Chechnya. And in 1999, he was, uh, 1991, he was also had been accused of breaking up the Soviet Union. But it was unpredictable why he resigned. In 19, on December 31, 1991, he just, I don't know, he gave away all his power. And do you know who he named as his successor? He inadvertently gave Russia away to a dictatorship. He named his successor as Prime Minister Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin. Now, Vladimir Putin completely changed how Russia worked. But now, let's focus on Ukraine. Stuff was happening in Ukraine. And to, uh, now, this pro-Russian government had been in place for long enough. But in 2013, bad things started happening. Now, Ukraine was cozying up with both the EU and Russia, which kind of made them stuck between a rock and a hard place. However, in December of 2013, they were meant to sign a bill that would integrate them into the EU's economic system. However, just before the bill was meant to be signed, it was halted. And immediately, protests and riots started breaking out. In November of 2013, this EU, uh, anti-EU stance was angering many parts of Western Ukraine who already didn't really like the pro-Russian government. 
and they started to riot. And two people were killed in the demonstration in Western Ukraine. And then it got even worse. <clears throat> the EU threatened to sanction Ukraine if it didn't find a way to make the violence and the blood stop. And Russia decided to give Ukraine a loan of about $15 billion. That's a lot. But even that amount of fat money, that amount of fat cash, it could not stop what was happening. Ukraine was broken, and eventually the riots start, kept happening. The police kept shooting people, and blood kept being spilled. And the EU delivered on its promise of sanctioning Ukraine. Nothing could have been worse for the pro-Russian government. Eventually, the pro, uh, eventually a law was passed stating, we don't like protests, so we're banning them. And uh, however, this was not enough. Hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians took to the streets, and even the Eastern Ukrainians, who had usually liked the pro-Russian government, were starting to riot as well. Eventually, in February 2021, 2014, an agreement was reached between the EU and Ukraine. First, the president was impeached. Now, the president was so scared of being impeached, he fled out of Kiev and out of Ukraine. Second thing second, all protesters during the thing were granted amnesty. Third out of third, a new constitution was drafted. A constitution from 2004. And fourth things fourth, and possibly the most important of them all, Ukraine hated Russia. Later that year, pro-Russian pro demonstrators started trying to take the Crimean Peninsula. Huh? Uh, started trying to take the Crimean Peninsula. And this went down horribly. While pro-Russian forces were able to capture the Crimean Peninsula, many started threatening Russia. And Ukraine, uh, in Crimea, it was still recognized as part of Ukraine. However, this started to go to a new height when in Donbass, a region in eastern Ukraine started getting full with Russian protesters and demonstrators as well. Eventually, pro-Russian forces captured the Ukrainian province of Donbass too, and Russia undertook a, not only a military, but also a political operation to make sure Donbass and Crimea fell into Russian hands. And now, look what has happened. Russia has started to indiscriminately invade Ukraine. That brings us to where we are today. Russia does not want NATO expansion on its border. It still wants some buffer states in Europe. It can't turn to Asia. And so, that, and, and so that means keeping Ukraine out of NATO. And they have gone to so many lengths to do this. Putin himself has made Russia his own little dictatorship. In fact, he even rigged votes from the people to buy him 12 more years on the throne. I'm not kidding. He actually rigged votes from the people to make sure that he could run for two more presidential terms where he would get six years. And now, this really shows how dire the situation is. Putin does not just want to destroy Ukraine. Putin does not just see the Ukrainians as a subordinate race, but he is also ignoring the wishes of his own fellow Russians, and he is arresting and detaining them. Yesterday, thousands of protesters accumulated in Moscow and St. Petersburg, calling for peace with Ukraine. And guess what? Every single one of them was detained, and so many were unfortunately and tragically killed because of all of this. Putin is not listening to the wishes of his people. Putin has become a dictator. He has not only shown his aggression towards the Ukrainian people, he has also shown his ignorance to his own people. And for that, 
I promise something will come. He has detained and arrested so many people. He has tried to suppress not only the Ukrainian people, but the Russian people. But let me let you know of something, Putin. And I'm not talking to Russia. I'm talking to Putin himself. You will never be able to suppress the will of the Ukrainian people. And I commend President Zelensky for taking such a journey from being a comedian acting as the president to becoming the president and now not cowardly fleeing the country like some normal president, like, uh, like some normal president who wants their life. But he is fighting on the street. He is fighting for his own country. He has taken up a gun and he is fighting with his fellow countrymen. And not just that, the former president is fighting too. The mayor of Kiev is fighting too. Every single Ukrainian is rising up. They are fighting valiantly for their country. And to all of my Ukrainian brothers and sisters out there, keep fighting hard, keep fighting valiantly, keep fighting firm. And to Putin, you are making a grave mistake. And no matter how long it takes, let me remind you, the grave mistakes, they get punished. Thank you, everybody. And I wish the best of luck to all of my Ukrainian brothers and sisters.